When we start to think about living on alternative planets, we have to ask ourselves why. We're bound to, to explore and to expand into the solar system as a whole. We are going to become an interplanetary species out of sheer curiosity and love of going to explore. If you imagine, where would you want to live? On the planet, on the moon, on Mars, or in a space station that is orbiting? We should have a space station. We should have reusable capsules, reusable rockets. Can we get humans to go back to the moon and eventually onto Mars in a sustainable manner? My name is Athena Kustenis, Director of Research on Planetary Sciences. My name is Salim al Murray. I'm Director General of the Mohamed Barasha Space Centre. My name is Diego Urbina, I'm the Team Leader for Future Projects and Exploration. My name is Mark Beer, I'm involved in the Asgardia, the nation built on a satellite. My name is Michal Ziso. I am researching and designing and creating living environments for humans outside of Earth. If you want to move away from planet Earth, the question then is, where do you want to go? The first explorers on Earth that went from Europe to the Americas or to the Indies, they did it because they wanted to find out what is out there and they made their living environments there. So we are going to take it step by step. We're first going to build space stations around the Earth. Then we're going to go to the moon and we're going to build a base there. We should have an ability to land on the surface of the moon and go to structures that exist there that we can survive there for a couple of weeks to a month and eventually start thriving and surviving on the surface of the moon. If we can do that on the moon, then we can definitely go a little bit further and do that on Mars. First, we will live in the spacecrafts that we are coming with and then we will recycle them. Well, there are a lot of resources that we can use once we get to the moon or to Mars for construction. Even we can send um, robots or rovers before humans get there and they start to do the mining on their own with large-scale 3D printing of actual habitats. If you wanted to have a colony there, you need to make sure that almost everything that they need is uh, uh, obtained from Mars. That's why we work uh, right now on Earth on concepts such as in situ resource utilization, where we aim to extract, uh, for example, water, oxygen from the lunar and Martian uh, regolith uh, so that uh, humans can breathe it and humans can drink it and we can use it as propellant for rockets. We have our Mars mission itself, it's currently there, uh, orbiting Mars, studying the Martian atmosphere, which can give us indications of what's happening to the atmosphere. And of course, if you want to send humans or if you want to send uh, rovers eventually in the future, you, you need that type of data to support you. As times move on, we'll be able to do terraforming, which is creating Mars, for example, uh, atmosphere. Mars doesn't have liquid water on the surface. But if you have water ice, you can make it into liquid. You can even evaporate it and put it in the atmosphere in the form of clouds. If you have clouds, then you can protect yourself from the solar radiation. And eventually be able to walk around Mars in the open air and start having plants because we created atmosphere and then that uh, type of architecture will be different. If you wanted to terraform Venus, it would be much more complicated. You would need to remove the acid from the atmosphere. You would need to make the atmosphere less dense. And you would need to create some sort of convection that would help stabilize the temperature at something that a human body can sustain. We tend to underestimate the impact of technology in the long term and overestimate it in the short term. So to say we're going to have a colony on Mars in 100 years sounds far-fetched, sounds extraordinary, but I think it will happen. Within 50 years, we will be able to visit and stay on the moon. Within 100 years, we'll be able to uh, go to Mars. It's a little harder to get back from Mars. It's not a weekend away, but um, nevertheless, I think that's what we'll be able to do. You've got one of these uh, projects that actually gets humans to the moon, gets a large amount of humans to the moon, and then eventually from there goes to Mars and does it before the end of this decade and does it in a sustainable and a relatively cheap way. What Mars can offer is uh, a redundancy 
is like having your second home. And that's the idea, to um, be able to, to, to expand into the cosmos. And the fact that we're able to go to Mars will mean that we're also able to go to other places and harvest the resources for other places. So we're going to be moving step by step to even the furthest out regions of the solar system. And from there, one day when technology allows this, I think we're going to be able, like the Voyager missions, to go outside the solar system and fly perhaps to an exoplanet, one of those planets that we're studying today around different stars than our own.